Hi everybody, welcome back. That was a busy week. That was a lot of sewing that we did with our raw edge applique. I hope you enjoyed doing the um, message even though it's a little bit persnickety. Um, if you finished your homework from last week, your quilt should look something like this. This has all of the appliques from lesson one applied to the blocks in the right position. The only thing that's different is I have um, spray basted my quilt sandwich together. So let me just run over that real quick because you'll want to have your sandwich together before we begin quilting. My favorite thing to use for a small quilt is 505 basting spray. It's a little bit more expensive than other brands, but I think it's dollars to the wise. It doesn't gum up your needle. It's um, it's very dependable and it's very repositionable. So that's why I like 505. So what I do when I make my quilt sandwich, well, let me let me just talk about the backing for a second before I jump ahead to that. We've talked about how using solids and read as solids on your quilt will make your embellishments pop. So um, for those of you who love the fun fabric and wild prints and that kind of thing, put your party on the back of the quilt. This is an excellent place to put it because we're going to do all kinds of stitching and machine stitching and the sort of loudness, fun, playful thing that's going on with this fabric will help hide um, all of that extra stitch work. And if you make a little mistake here or there, it'll just sort of blend in and, and it won't be all that noticeable. So what I've done is I take my backing piece I've cut it slightly larger than my quilt top. So it's, you know, I don't know, maybe three quarters of an inch to an inch larger all the way around. I'm gonna lay it down on my work surface wrong side up. And I'll just give it a, a quick dusting with my 505 basting spray. This is very, very sticky. So I recommend laying out an old sheet in your garage, spraying it. You can always throw the sheet in the washer afterwards because it will leave a sticky residue all over the place light dusting on the wrong side of your backing and then you can lay your quilt batting and I like a thin low loft quilt batting you'll lay it on top of that and just sort of pat it you don't want to rub because this will distort your backing but if you just sort of put gentle pressure you can kind of pat it um, that will adhere the back then another light dusting of your spray and your quilt top now this is already the sandwich, but you would lay your quilt top on the top and, and pat it again. This will give you really nice adherence. And what I've done on my sandwich, just because we're going to be working on it for a few weeks, is after I've got all of it spray basted, I just went ahead and basted a stitch all the way around the edge, maybe an eighth of an inch in, just for a little extra security. So once you get to this point, we're going to we're going to hit the sewing machine. We're going to work with some metallic thread. I'm going to give you some tips and I really think that you'll have a lot more fun and success with just a couple little hints on metallic thread. So I'll see you in a few minutes over at the sewing machine. Welcome back. I'm at the sewing machine now. We're getting ready to use our metallic threads. Um, we're going to do a large chunky zigzag and I just want to give you a couple of tips if you're ever using any thread, but especially metallic thread, that's not your normal piecing um, 50 weight thread. Uh, there's three things that you really want to keep in mind that are critical to getting great results with your metallic thread. And the first of these is tension. You're going to need to reduce your upper tension by a lot. And don't be afraid. I have some students that reduce it almost to zero. Don't be afraid to reduce it. If your thread's breaking, keep reducing the tension even more and keep reducing it even more. Um, the second thing that's really critical is you have to have the proper needle in your sewing machine. What I like to use and what I have the best success with is a Metafill size 8012. What's critical about using a Metafill needle or a needle for metallic thread is that the eye of the needle is much longer than it is on other needles. And what, what happens when you have a long eye in your needle is when it's in the down position on the stitch, when your needle is inside your sewing machine, the long needle gives the thread a longer amount of time to connect with that bobbin thread and you won't get skipped stitches. So that's critical. It's also a very sharp needle. It has a groove along the shaft which protects the uh, metallic thread. So all of those things are really important. And then the third thing, which is equally as important as your tension and your needle, is your sewing speed. If you're one of those sewers that 
that cruises along like you're on the Audubon and you just sew really fast, you are gonna have to think about this as the double fine zone in the school zone. Slow way, way down. Uh, we have a little visitor in the classroom today. My dog Charlie is over here <laughs> scratching and rooting around in his little bed. Um, if that's probably what that noise is that you're hearing in the background. So anyway, keep in mind that when you're sewing with metallic thread, you want to slow down. So I kind of think of it as a school zone. You're, you want to go slow and steady. All right, I've put together a muslin, what I call a practice sandwich. Um, it's exactly what we did when I was standing up at the work table showing you how to put your backing and quilt top together. But it's just two pieces of muslin with your quilt batting in the middle. Um, I use it as a trial piece, I use it to warm up when I'm doing stitches. Eventually, it it look it starts to look like this, and it's pretty crazy and busy. And here I was trying some different couching, um, but it's a great tool, and it's really important when you're trying to set your tension and get your your stitching speed correct for your um, metallic thread. So I'm going to load this into the machine. Um, there's a couple of things that I've done on my machine. I have reduced my, my tension on my machine to a 3.2. That might be a good starting point for you. You can see if you, um, if you need to adjust it. Uh, what I want for in the sky to add some texture is a really chunky wide zigzag. So on my machine, I've set my stitch length at 5.0 and my stitch width at 4.5. And then again, my tension's at 3.2. So I'm gonna stitch along and, and show you what that looks like. On my sample, I used a light silver, which doesn't show up on camera as well. So here I'm using kind of a charcoal. So I'm just going slow and steady, doing my zigzag. And, and even on my practice piece, I'm gonna kind of do a gentle curve just to get the feel for what I'm gonna do when I get my quilt underneath here. But this also reminded me of another um, important thing that I do. Whenever I'm doing a decorative stitch, I put an open toe foot on my machine because I like to really be able to see where I'm going. So let's take this out and just take a look at it on camera. Um, I've, so I've got a real wide chunky zigzag and I'm going to do a gentle curve. Now on your practice piece, once you know that you've got the stitch that you want and the tension that you like. You can take um, a pen and just make a note. So I would do length 5.0, width 4.5, and my tension is a 3.2. Something like that right on my practice piece. And then the next time I pick up my practice piece, I'll remember, oh yeah, that was the zigzag I liked and these were my settings. All right, so let's give it a go on our actual quilt. Uh, this is a, a marking tool. I'm just gonna mention it because some people might not be comfortable um, just doing a gentle curve with no guideline on their quilt. This tool does not actually leave a mark, a written mark on your quilt, but I call it the groovy tool because it leaves a groove that you can follow. Now I'm going to I'm going to go ahead and do it on my quilt. It may or may not show up on camera, but when you're sewing with it, you can really see the mark. So I'm just going to push put a lot of pressure on my quilt and put a gentle curve across the sky piece. So I'm not I'm not sure if that shows up on camera or not, but I can see it really well. So I'm going to sew across here with my gentle zigzag and remembering that I'm in the school zone. So I'm following my gentle curve. And you can do this all the way across the sky. If you get really brave while you're zigzagging, you can play with changing your stitch width as you're stitching. So I'm just pushing the button to reduce my stitch width and bring my stitches closer together. 
actually that's my stitch length. I'll show you when I pull it out. The I adjusted the stitch length so the stitches got close together. And I can adjust the stitch width if I like. It's just kind of playtime to make the stitches shorter in width. And then maybe on the curved back, I'll make them wide again. Okay, let's take it out. And you can see I made it all the way across with no breakage. You know, once you get the tension set and you and you got the right needle and you're sewing um, at a slow speed. So you can see as I've come across when I was playing with the stitch length, the stitches get a lot closer together. And then over here, I was playing with the stitch width and they get, they're wider up here and they get narrower down here. And I really didn't follow my mark completely true to the mark and on this quilt it's not gonna matter. You just wanna kind of have some gentle curving of your zigzag stitch. It's a stylized cloud sort of look. And on my sample piece, I did two rows of zigzag across the sky. And then I switched from um, a zigzag stitch just to a basic straight stitch. And when I did that, just to add a few more lines, give a few cloud striations across the sky, I went ahead and switched out the color. So on my sample, the zigzag is done in a light silver. And um, let's see, I'll point to it on the sample done in a light silver and then I did some straight lines with a with a kind of a teal blue. So I'm not going to change my thread color just for time's sake but I'm going to switch the stitch to my basic um, straight stitch. I'm going to check my tension because everything went back to um, my machine's sort of auto set when I switched the stitch. So I want to check my tension. I'm going to go back whoop, I'm going to go back down to my 3.2 because I know that that works and I'm just going to use the regular stitch length just to put some extra um, texture in the sky. Now we're going straight stitch so you'll be tempted to go faster but really don't go faster. <laughs> You're still in the school zone. And your gentle curve does not need to match the one that you did before. Okay, let's pop that up and see. I, I could tell it was making a funny sound. If you hear, if you know it doesn't sound like um, what your machine normally sounds like, it's probably having a little bit of a hiccup. What I should have done on my quilt sandwich was test it out what settings I like for the straight stitch. It, it might be a little bit different than the zigzag. So you can see on here that I skipped a couple, which really is not that big of a deal to fix. I can, I can, you know, pull these stitches off and then do another line. So before I do that, let me just go on my sample piece with my straight stitch and reduce my tension. Let's see even more. That's usually what's causing a problem when your um, machine is not happy with your metallic thread. So let me try it on here. All right, so a little hiccup there, but that's okay. It's all, it's all about learning. So what I've done for my straight stitch is I reduced my tension even more to a 1.8 and that solved my problem. So now I'm going to go ahead and do um, a gentle curve just with a straight stitch. Keeping in mind that you, it's the school zone, it's sounding nice and smooth now. Which that's a much better sound than it was making before. See how it's just sewing better. It's you're just going to have to play with tension, and that's the only thing 
you know, if you just take a couple of minutes on each stitch to see where your machine is happy with the different thread, then you'll be good to go and it opens up a whole new world of, of a different kind of thread to use. What's really fun with this metallic thread is that we're putting it on the sky block that was our Essex linen. So we've got sort of the coarser weave of the linen and the matte finish of our linen with this kind of sparkly um, sky texture. So I would go ahead and do um, probably two rows with the zigzag and then, I don't know, three, four, or five, whatever looks nice to fill in your sky texture. And that's it for lesson two. We've, we've uh, successfully made it through our metallic stitching.